Welcome everyone to our Culture Estate channel, where we cover all things real estate, entrepreneurship, and mindset. Today on Culture Report, we'll be talking about bulk sales, specifically in New Jersey, and what every real estate investor needs to know before the day of the closing. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now first, let's start off with an explanation of what bulk sales are. Now, if you're in the state of New Jersey, bulk sale appeared on the scene many years ago. And what happened is that New Jersey was not getting their fair share of the taxes when real estate investors were selling their properties for a profit. So what they did, specifically when Christie was in office, is they implemented the already existing bulk sale transfer when real estate investors would sell their properties for a profit. So. If you are an investor and you made $100,000 on your property, but then at the end of the year, you either squandered that money or you reinvested it into something else, a lot of times the state wasn't collecting their fair share of the money. So what they implemented, it was a way to just tax you at the closing table. This was a nightmare scenario. No one knew what they were doing and everyone was scared. So we actually had to figure out a way to make this more tolerable if we wanted to continue investing. So the way it works now is you have to make sure that you declare to the state exactly how much you're making on that profit or close enough to an estimate of what you're making on that transaction right before the closing. If not, they're gonna hold a humongous escrow and expect you to be okay with it. So in this video, we're gonna share with you how to fill out the proper paperwork in order to not have any surprises on closing day. And later on, we'll dig deeper and show you what the nightmare scenarios could be if you're not properly aware of what to do and when to do it. So let's jump right to it. So our first step in filling out the paperwork for the bulk sale is getting your hands on the C-9600 form, which we're gonna attach down to the description of this video. So I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how to fill that out. Let's go ahead and do it. This form is pretty self-explanatory. I filled out the sections for you just to give you a point of reference on what you should be including. Very simple to fill out, name of purchaser, trade name of purchaser in the event that the purchaser is an LLC or a company, the address of the purchaser, their federal identification number, sometimes known as the EIN number, if they're buying under their own personal name, then it would be the social security number and it would go here. If there's an attorney that's representing them, you're gonna to wanna to put the attorney's information and their phone number. And then here you have to put in the EIN number or the federal identification number of the seller. On the lower portion, you're gonna put the seller's information. If you're the seller, which if you're watching this video, you probably are, you're gonna fill out your information, the information of your company, if it's under an LLC or a corporation, then you're gonna put in who is the representative of that corporation, which is yourself. And then you're gonna put down the address for the seller or the corporation, which is not necessarily the address of the property. And then here you're gonna put your contact information such as your phone number or business phone number. Again, your federal identification number or EIN number. If you're selling as an individual, then you're gonna to have to put your social security number. And if you're being represented by an attorney, then you will put the attorney's information here their phone number and then you're also at this lower portion gonna have to fill out the day you acquired the property as you can see here for just this example we put down January 1st 2018 then they're gonna want to know when you're scheduled to sell the property which is in 12 30 2019 and then they want to know how much you're selling the property for in this case we see it's 400,000 and the location of the property you will have to put down here 123 fake street and then a signature down at the bottom. Now, one thing that most people tend to forget to do is when you're gonna send this out to the state, you're gonna to wanna to send it along with a copy of your sales contract. A lot of people forget to send that together with it and it gets denied for that reason. So make sure that you send that and that the closing dates match up. Getting into step number two is gonna be a little more complicated and is gonna require a little bit more thought on your part. If you need tax advice, please see your CPA or your accountant because I am not a tax professional and I am not giving out tax advice. What I am gonna give you is the link to the form that you're gonna need for step number two right in this description and that's the asset declaration form. It's very easy to fill out and most people can do it on their own but if you have any doubt whatsoever, please contact your CPA or accountant. If you need the contact of a CPA or an accountant, I will also leave the information for my accountant down below in the description. Now let's jump into step number two. The asset transfer declaration form is what's gonna get you out of hot water. And here you're gonna to wanna to describe how much money you paid for the property, how much money you're actually gonna profit from the property. So the top portion is pretty simple. 
you're gonna put in the information of yourself as the seller, the LLC, <clears throat> the name of the buyer, the EIN number associated to the seller, and the date that the property is going to sell. You also wanna disclose what kind of company you are. Most of the sellers out there are gonna be LLCs, so just for this example, I put down an LLC. Now here underneath that, it's gonna ask you how you file your tax return. Most people are gonna be NJ 1040, so you can just check off this portion, but if you're something different, uh, please make sure you check the appropriate box. Then it's gonna ask you a little bit about the property. So it's gonna ask you the lot and block, which you can obviously find that very easily on tax records, the address of the property, and then down here, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So number one is gonna ask you how much are you selling the property for? I'm just giving you an example here with $400,000 sale price. Then it's gonna ask you how much settlement charges are you taking up on this property? So settlement charges means closing costs. So your closing costs when you acquire the property, closing costs when you're selling the property, that can all go right in here. Then you're gonna look at something different here, which is number three, cost after depreciation. This is what gets most people. The number that goes in here is the price that you paid for the property minus any depreciation that you already took. If you're unfamiliar with what depreciation is, please ask your accountant. If you've only owned this home for one year and you haven't filed taxes for this property yet, chances are you have not depreciated the property. So that'll be pretty easy for you to calculate. So number three would just be the purchase price of your home. Not the purchase price plus expenses, but just the purchase price of the property. Then you're gonna wanna jump down to number seven. Most people won't have to worry about four, five, or six, but if you feel that you do, please talk to your accountant. Number seven is gonna ask you to basically just subtract lines two through six from line one. Obviously, that's what it says here. So for this example, the profit was $75,000. Then you take number seven, and then you also replicate it down here on number nine. Very simple. And then you also go down to number 10. Number 10 asks you how much percent of the gain is yours. So if you have a 50-50 partner, you would fill out 50% here. Your partner will be responsible for filling out his own asset declaration form and put his 50% on that document as well. If you're the only member, then you can put in 100%. And then number 10 would also match number nine. Number 11 is gonna be different for everyone. So your effective tax rate is gonna be different depending on your personal status. Just for this example, we used 7.5. And the reason we use 7.5 is because if you go to page number two, it's gonna show you on line 11 that if your profit is between 50 to $100,000, you can use 7.5. So just for this example, we're gonna use 7.5 to calculate what your tax should be. What the asset declaration form does is that it gives them a rough estimate of how much money they should be withholding from you. So when you go to file your tax return at the end of the year, the amount that you paid at the transaction time may be too little or may be too much. Only your CPA or accountant can figure that out with you at that time. But keep in mind, even though it may seem like a large sum of money that they're taking from you at closing, it's nothing in comparison with what the state can take and keep an escrow until you show them how much you actually made. And that's exactly where we're gonna get into next. Now imagine this, you've been working on a transaction for several months. The money you're gonna profit from it has already been spent on other things. And at the 11th hour, you find out that the state wants to hold a $25,000 escrow. This is a nightmare scenario that a lot of investors have faced. We're gonna show you what a document that comes from the state actually looks like and what information you need to pull away from it. Let's go ahead and jump right in it. If you're an active investor and you've never seen one of these letters before, it's only a matter of time until you do. This letter was sent to us by the state and as you can see, for this example, we've accommodated it with the proper information of our seller and buyer. What this tells you is that the state wants to hold a certain amount of money on this transaction. If no one has taken the time out to fill out the asset declaration form, you're gonna get hit with a large escrow. In this case, we showed you that 25,000 is what the state wants to hold. Now this can easily be taken care of if you do the steps that we outlined in this video. But what I'm gonna show you now is how to take this letter and use it for your advantage. Whenever you're going to be going through a bulk sale, you're gonna have a representative assigned to you. The representative's name is gonna be listed here, but it's also gonna be listed in page number two. On page number two, it's gonna show you the fax number of your representative. 
And what you can do is actually send your tax declaration form directly to your representative via that fax number. Now it is really hard to get in touch with them, so what you need to do is fax it over and then within 24 hours call them. But call them early, call them around 8 o'clock or 8.30 in the morning to make sure you're following up with the phone call so you can verify that they received that fax. If you do that, you should have a new clearance letter showing that the amount that they're holding or want to hold is way too much. They're either going to agree with the amount that you sent over in the asset declaration form or sometimes they may hold absolutely nothing. So make sure you fill that out and get it done as soon as possible. Now hopefully if you took the steps that we outlined in this video, you won't have to see one of these letters. The fact is that most attorneys and most title companies will not file the bulk sale on time. They'll always forget, they'll always leave it for the last minute. So you as the seller, as the investor, you have to make sure that you take the proper steps on your own behalf or remind your attorney to take the steps on your behalf and get your accountant to fill out your asset declaration form if you're not certain about how much money you should be putting down and get that over to the state at least with two or three weeks anticipation of the closing date so you don't have to hold any large escrows. And now that is digging deeper. Okay, question of the day. Have you ever had to leave behind an escrow balance? And if you did, how much was it? Leave it down in the comments below so we can all learn from each other's experiences. And lastly, the more you interact with our channel, the more we can grow as a community online. So don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and most importantly, hit that notification bell so you can be alerted whenever we do any new videos. Thank you for the support, and we'll see you next time.